Alhamdulillah, min al-shaytan al-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam ala sayyid al-anbiya wa al-mursaleen. Thumma salatu ala amir al-mu'minin. Thumma salatu ala sayyidat al-nisa al-alameen. Thumma salatu ala alalih al-ma'asumeen. Bil-khususi ala al-hasani wa al-husayn. ولعنة الدعمة على عدائهم أجمعين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم One of the problem that we face today and I want the special attention of the parents and uh, obviously the kids as well those who are listening there are always some extremes of each and every if you get excess of anything, that's a problem. Excess of anything is a problem. That's, a, that's one thing that one needs to understand. For example, we sometimes live in a country like Pakistan and like some other Asian countries where there are lack of resources and people are suffering because of lack of resources. And one problem that we see in those countries is is the hyper dependence for example a whole family would be relying on a single person no one would be trying to do something by themselves and that hyper dependence leads to more problems hyper dependence if you are highly dependent on others and you are not trying to do something by yourself that creates problem the biggest problem is it's a problem it's an obstacle it's an impediment in your own growth. A person who keeps on relying on others, a person who wants to live under the shadow of others, it can never grow. He cannot come up as a person who is self-reliant. So there is a need, for example, if you are living in such country and if you are interacting with such people, there is a need that you should tell them that try to rely on yourself, take some responsibility, come forward, do something by yourself. You cannot spend the whole life by, heart, by depending on others. You have to do something by yourself. So, for such people, we will quote tradition like that. Amir al-Mu'mineen says, Amnun alayya, amnun ala man shayta kahun amira. That do good to whomever you want, to become his ruler. When you give something to someone, you are basically making yourself his, his ruler. And another, and wahtaj ila man And help anyone you want. Well, take the help of any person you want. And what would be the consequence you will be captured by him you will become highly dependent on him you will become his asir you will become his captive so if you are highly dependent on someone you it's like you are becoming his captive captive and your whole life relies on him or her was amman shayta and if you want to seek freedom if you want to seek free freedom and independence from someone do whatever he is doing for example, if you are highly depending on your father, what is he doing? He is providing you something, he is providing you sustenance, he is providing you means of the life. Then start doing those things so that you can become independent of it. So if you are living in a country where people are highly dependent on others, you will have to tell them such quotations, some ahadith that take responsibility and come forward. But there is another problem. Hyper-independence. Just like hyper-dependence is a problem, hyper-independence is a problem as well. In this country, one of the things that each and everyone being is each and everyone is being taught that you have to be independent, totally independent. A kind of individualistic society. You do not need to rely on the parents, you don't need to rely on the family, and you don't need to rely even on the, on the spouse. And the reliance on the spouse is again very limited. The purpose of marriage is very limited. It's just a physical inti intimacy. You don't need the financial. You, you did not depend on someone financially, psychologically, emotionally, spiritually. That's what's being taught. 
That's what you are told. And if any person becomes hyper independent, what is the problem? That is a, it's, it's a situation where you are extremely self-reliant. You are reliant on just yourself and you think you don't need anyone, you don't need the assistance of anyone, and you don't need anyone else. You are enough for yourself. But that's not how human beings are built. Their psyche is not like that. They need some. They need the assistance. They need the support. They, they need someone who can stand on their back. They need someone who can assure them by I'm existing. And that, that makes the life habitable. That makes the life uh, enjoyable. So the people who are highly, highly independent, who are kind of hyper independent, the problem is they cannot maintain healthy relationships. And another thing is they cannot maintain emotional relationships. And they cannot go, they cannot seek help. They cannot uh, do the teamwork properly. So for, for them, everything is like business. Whether they are with the parents, whether they are with the uh, sisters, whether they are with the brothers. For them, everything is like one plus one is equal to, it's like a business. And they don't want to rely on anyone. And one thing that you need to teach your kids in this country. They are already being taught that you have to be independent. Teach them, teach them something that they have to rely on. Teach them some, some dependence on others, especially on yourself, on the family, on their brother, on, on the neighbor. I think last time I gave you an example that when you ask your neighbor, for example, like sugar, you can even ask for, for example, uh, salt. That's a very small thing. But the thing is, it is bringing an interaction. There are different forms of communication. Different forms of communication. One type style of communication is when you are coming on the pulpit. That's a totally different thing. You, I cannot speak with anyone like I speak here in the, in the social setting. I have to change my style. And similarly, if you want to seek help, I mean, that needs a style of communication. You have to build a kind of relationship only then you can ask properly. So kids need to be taught different styles of communication, how you seek help. For example, personally, I would say, when I go before my parents, still, in this age, I still act like child. I beg before them, literally like I'm begging before them. I don't, I, I don't want to present myself a person who's like grown up. And what happens, this develops a deep emotional connection with your parents. Look at those siblings. Those siblings who are highly dependent on each other, they have bad relationships. Look at those spouses who are dependent on each other, who are needing each other, somehow, one way or the other, their emotional relationship would be better. And even in your friendships, you would have better friendship with those who, with whom you are exchanging the things. And they are asking you for something and you are asking them for something. So that, that's how human beings are built. And one problem that you face, especially when these kids grow up, the first thing when they are trying to enter the, enter the marital life, the problem is they want, don't, they're not seeking a family where the parents of, of the, for example, boy are living. They, they are kind of highly, highly hesitant about that. There are other problems, obviously. There are some societal problems as well. But one problem is they want their independence, their individuality. But there's a cost of everything. There's a cost of independence. And there's a cost of dependence as well. You, have, you always need to balance between these two things. Now I'm coming to the tradition. Why I'm mentioning these all? Some people think because from the member, from the pulpit, you most of the time hear, Okay, just depend on Allah, just rely on Allah. You don't need anyone else. That, that's one thing. This is for those people who are highly dependent on others. Here the tradition, Imam Zainul Abidin was passing by a person. Durud by Muhammad And he was sitting in a mosque. In a mosque. And he was praying, Oh Allah, Make me needless of the people. Make, make me independent of your servant. Make me independent of the people. Anyone? Sir Lavdin was passing by. He said, 
ليس حافظا انما الناس بالناس این طور نگو زیرا مردم به هم دیگر نیاز مندن Do not say like that because people need each other uh, If I exactly try to translate the Arabic إنما الناس بالناس that people survive because of the people They live because of the people They cannot survive without them If you are thinking that you want to become only dependent on Allah it doesn't work like that الناس بالناس people are living they are existing because there are some other people and if you start the, if, you, if there are no other human beings if you lose that social connection you are not literally existing properly الناس بالناس ولكن قل اللهم اغن اغنني عن شرار خلقك بلکه بگو خدایا مرا از بدان خلقت بی نیاز گردان Well, do not say that make me independent of the people. Say, oh Allah, make me independent of the evil people. Make me ind independent of lowly people. Make me independent of irresponsible people. Make me independent of insensitive people. Who are, who are not respecting you at all. Make me independent of such people who, when I go to them and ask for something, and they do not pay attention to me. Otherwise, you need people, you need human beings, you need the family, you need the friends in your life. And another, another tradition by the Prophet of Islam, Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah, 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 And he, he said the kind of very similar thing. لا تقولن هاكذا فليث من أحد إلا وهو محتاج إلى الناس. Don't say that, oh Allah, make me independent of the people, make me independent of your servants. Because there is no one human being on the face of earth who doesn't need other people. There is none like that. You need other people. Allahumma la tuhwajni ila shirari khalqin. Rather, pray before the Almighty God, do not make me dependent on those people who are evil, who are lowly, who are insensitive. Who are not taken care and who, who don't have the nobility do not make me dependent on such people otherwise you need all of them and when you are going to your kids are going to the university they are going to the school school are basically trying to improve enhance their IQ that is their ability to process the information IQ is basically is the mayor of your intelligence, how, how you solve the things, how you solve the problems. But there are other things that are relevant in your life, for example, EQ, which is called emotional quotient. That is your ability to maintain peace with others. For example, there's a problem between one person and another person. How are you going to maintain your relationship? That's, that requires emotional quotient. Are you emotionally stable? stable? And do you have the proper in emotional intelligence? If, 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 that, if, if that's the thing that you have got, you will be able to maintain better relation in your life. Another thing is social quotient. That is your ability to build a network of friends and maintain it over a long period of time. And if you want to maintain it for a longer period, the thing is you need someone. A few days back, I was speaking, I was talking with uh, my younger brother, and uh, he was. He was saying like, uh, uh, I shouldn't be asking you for anything, for, like, for example, like uh, money or anything else. I said, why? When we are talking with each other, when we are speaking with each other, there is still a need. What's that need? The social need. Okay, why we have only problem with the economic needs, there are social needs, there are psychological needs, there are emotional needs, there are spiritual needs. So, if you build a relationship where you are exchanging the things, the relationship builds better. And if you are not exchanging the things at all, and you think you, you are, you, you don't need anyone, that's a serious problem. One thing that you won't be able to maintain proper relationship, and you, you are prone to anxiety and depression. You are literally prone to anxiety and depression. Because there's such kind of hyper independence is not, is not something which is, which is which is recommended. For example, if you look at the human beings, we are already very limited. 
For, for example, you remember how many people do you know in your life and, and you interact with them on a daily basis? They would literally be 10, 15, 20, 30, that's it. Because we are limited. We can't extend our connections so much that, that, that we cannot maintain our life. So we have to limit it. There is one limit, limitation. There, all, there is already a limitation which is existing with a human being. If you try to limit it further, that you don't need anyone, Think of your life. How is, it, how is it gonna be? And this is something that in, in this country, the parents need to teach the kids. Because if they are if they start thinking that they are independent and they don't need anyone, that would be a serious problem in, in, in the in their next in the life, when, especially when they enter into the into the marriage. They would be seeking such kind of independence, a novel kind of independence, which has never existed. So I will be coming to another tradition where Imam says, I was saying that, that do not pray before the Almighty God that make me independent of those people who are lowly. But here's what Imam Muhammad says, La tarfa hajataka illa illa ahadin salasa. Do not ask for something except from three kind of people. What are those? Ila the deen or murabba or hasan. One person who has a deen, who is religious. And the second person is a noble man who thinks that he is dignified and he tries to protect his nobility and dignity. And the third thing is who has a noble family tree. Do not ask for anything except from these type, type, type of people. One, who is, who thinks, who is a religious man. Second, who thinks he is a noble man, he is dignified. And third, who, who is coming from a dignified family. Why is that so? Because a religious person needs you to protect his religion. Because if he doesn't provide you something that he can, then his religion won't be protected. Because there's a saying by the Imam Sadiq al-Islam that if some person If someone comes to you and he needs you and you can fulfill his need but you still deny it and you still step back and even you do not allow him to meet you then until your death, until you are alive Allah will keep on cursing you. If you, if you do not help someone that you could have helped, which was something that was in your capacity. So a person who has a religion, and if you go to such a person because he knows if I do not help this person, I cannot protect my religion. So he will help you. So why you should ask a religious man? And the second thing is, ask from a noble man. Because he will try to protect his nobility, his dignity, his respect. He wouldn't like to be ashamed before the people. So he will provide you and he will take care of your needs if he really can. And the third one is that someone who is coming from noble family, a noble family in Pakistan we call it Khandani, that someone who is coming from a noble family, he knows that when I ask you for something, it's literally like I have sold my dignity. So if some person has sold his dignity to you, and if you're coming from a noble family tree, and you know the value of dignity, the first thing you will do is, you will try to protect his reputation. Try to pr protect her reputation. This is why you should only ask from such kind of people. If you go to the evil people, if you go to the lowly people, then there's a serious problem. Okay, now coming to another tradition where Imam Sadiq salam says that Qala, Qala Allahu Adda wa Jalla al khalq wa yal. That's why I'm coming back to the concept of family. This is how important this is. Allah is saying my creation is like my family. Because you can easily ask members of your family whatever you need. Right? It would be a bit difficult for me to ask something from someone who is not from my family. But it becomes too easy to ask for something from my own father, from my own brother, from my own sister, or from my own mother. So when there is a kind of family relationship, 
and there are such a close relationship, it becomes easy. And Allah is saying, my creation is like my family. So, because it's easy, it's, it's easy to ask from someone who is from your own family. So the most beloved of them, to me, are those who are kinder to the people and more diligent in meeting their needs. فَأَحَبَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ أَلْدَخَهُمْ وَأَسْعَوْهُمْ فِي حَوَائِجِهِمْ so the, the person, so my whole creation is like family, but, but I love that one person who is taking care of the family. For example, in your own family, if you have one son or one daughter who takes care of the family, everyone will, would love him both. And that's exactly the case. If you are taking care of the needs of the people, whatever you can, it depends what, what's your capacity, whatever you can, then you are the most beloved of Allah. So, my creation is like family. That's, that's a very important phrase. That's the most important thing in human's life is the family. And the, if you have an extended fam family, that's better. That's not a problem. And another thing, there was a, a question was asked from the Imam Sadiq Islam that why, why Allah asked us to make prayer, to make supplication, while he knows it. While he already knows, okay, what are my needs? He knows. Why is he asking me to beg him? To ask him. One reason is, one psychological and practical reason is, when you ask something from Allah by pronouncing words, first thing is, you make your demands very precise. You streamline your demands. You exactly get to know what you, you want. One problem with the human beings is they, they cannot articulate their needs. So when you make prayer before the Almighty God in the form of words, then you are first of, okay, first of all you get to know, okay, what do I need? What do I need really in life? So that you can go after. And the second thing is because Allah loves, Allah loves His creation to ask from Him. It's just like, you will see many parents, they will love the kids asking them for something. Although they know their needs. Why? Because it's building their relationship. So you have to play like kids. That's what I was mentioning. I still like to play like a kid. A three, four year old kid before my parents. That's exactly you. If you want to build a better and deeper relationship, that's how it works. So the people who are begging before the Almighty God, they are loved more by Allah. Just like parents love their kids when they are asking, when they are begging. You see, like how lovely and how beloved they are to you when they are kind of shedding tears and they are eagerly asking for something. It's, it's exactly like that. If you are asking Allah while shedding tears, if you are kind of begging, He loves you. So, this is how you develop your relationship. In the society, obviously they are being taught independence. That's important as well. Because independence, the concept of independence, getting freedom from the people is important, it's valuable because your growth depends on this concept. But your psychological and mental health, your emotional health depends on connection with other people. And if you want to build connection, then you must feel, feel that there's, I need them. I need my family, I need my brothers, I need my sisters. So do something that you can do that they should have a kind of feeling in their life that we need it. And when they grow up, they do not break away from you. They do not detach themselves from you. And this is what you have to teach them here because that's a serious problem. Because if you're telling them, because excess of everything is a problem. In countries where there are lack of resources, people are suffering because of lack of resources. In this country, you see that people become spoiled because of excess of resources. If, if government is providing everything, there's every, and do you do not worry about anything, why would you take the responsibility? So the most spoiled people in this country, who are they? Who think, who don't take the responsibility because someone is taking care of them. So hyper-independence is a problem. And hyper-dependence is a problem as well. And you have to realize where are you living, in which circumstances are you living, and then you have to respond accordingly so that 
your children and even we, even the societies can grow emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, and intellectually. Allah.